Hello, uh, CIS 21 tenors. Um, wanted to give you a quick heads up about our first homework assignment. Uh, the assignment looks like this, or it may have had a couple changes, but this is the bottom line on this. Um, you're going to scroll down, and the first thing you'll see here will be the assignment, which is our problem statement, which is covered in the book and in the notes for chapter uh, two. You will see the problem statement's a paragraph. And I've talked to a couple of you, and you're expressing dismay at how poorly this is written and everything. It's not that poorly written, it's just that it's chuck full of information. You're going to have to read this several times. I mean like not two or three, like eight or ten times to decipher exactly what is required for the project. And that's fine. That's exactly what you're going to have happen to you uh, at your job when you get written instructions. If you go back to your boss and say, hey... You know, I need you to take another hour and make sure clean this up so that I can understand it. Sometimes you have legitimate questions, uh, but just getting it so it's perfect for you, that's not going to be a, uh, how you want to handle yourself at your job. This is everything that you need. Uh, roll with that. I've also gone ahead and highlighted for you. This is your first homework, your first uh, walkthrough. So I went ahead and highlighted the inputs, the outputs, and special notes or logic. The inputs are the terms that are in blue. The outputs are the things that are in green. And special notes or logic, those are in yellow, okay? Um, and you wanna take note uh, of uh, everything in here, get this down. The hardest part about getting going on this problem is really understanding it, understanding what's going on. But the problem is stated here, and what I'm asking you for is formulate the statement of the problem that's given to you I'm asking you to develop the IO design for this problem. So I'd like a list of all the input and output variables and a small description of each variable. I'm asking you to use the test data to develop a human level walkthrough and an annotated program level walkthrough. Be sure to watch our videos about human level walkthroughs and program level walkthroughs. And on page two, you're given some test data. So what'll happen, or what I'd like to uh, have you have happen is, uh, somebody sits down, they enter, for example, fall 2012 or 2020 is uh, the year as I write this video. Um, then they're gonna input a student code, which is 111. We go left to right in our walkthroughs. We go 111, 2.0, and 80. We go to the next student, 222, 285, and 100. These are our test inputs, our test values. When we get to the end, we enter the flag. Uh, some people have mentioned this is, it's, it can also be called a kill, uh, kill value. And it can also be thought of as like the password, you know, um, as long as I don't give you that, keep going. But once I give you the secret code, the password, that means stop and report or kill and exit. Um, your submission instructions are here. Uh, pretty straightforward, no big deal. Uh, please do follow the instructions and make sure that you submit all the required documents. This is uh, the handout. Read through it several times, and if you still have if you still have questions, then email me or set up a meeting in Microsoft Teams. Now, to get this uh, also going uh, more smoothly for you, I have created an Excel file, and it looks like this. When you open it, it might take it to this program level walkthrough, but what I'd like you to do is do a, a human level walkthrough and a program level walkthrough. So I've started each one of these for you. I have a list for inputs and outputs. And here's all the input variables that you will need. They're highlighted in blue. Here's all the output variables that you will need. They're highlighted in blue. And you'll note there's a variable called term. And that's the variable that I came up with to represent the term that was noted in the design document or in my problem statement. One of the other things I need to capture is a student ID code. I called that variable student ID. I need to capture each student's grade point average. GPA is about as standard as it gets. I've told you before, don't use uh, crazy shortcuts in the variable names. Um, but saying GPA, most of the world, uh, at least the English speaking Western world is gonna say grade point average, okay? So I've come up with my variable names for my inputs and my outputs. You'll notice that term is used twice. That's because I have a term that is input and a term that is output. Student ID is input, student ID is output. GPA, input, 
GPA output. Totally fine. Those are the same numbers, so they should match. Uh, this one's not showing 2.0. That's a formatting error, uh, but you get the idea. So we could do a quick walkthrough and say the first thing we want to do is input fall 2012, output fall 2012. Then we want to input a student ID. We want to input their GPA, and we want to input the number of hours that that student has completed. The next thing we want to do is output the student ID, output that student's GPA, and output the number of students of hours that that student has completed. And we do that for each student. So if I've asked you to complete the rest of the entries for the human level walkthrough. So you want to insert a row. And the, the next number is 4404. I can't remember what that number is. Let's call it 2.55 or whatever. And let's say that they have 88 hours. Okay. And this is all you're going to do. Very simple. Okay. You're going to put those numbers in and what, to complete the human level walkthrough. You can also choose another way of doing that. You could do an uh, annotated human level walkthrough. If you come to uh, this uh, annotated human level walkthrough, you'll see that I have broken this down. These are the same idea, but each row here has got one, two, three, four, or five, at least six steps in it. In my annotated human level walkthrough, um, I have a note, and each row is a single step input, output, input a student ID, input GPA, input hours completed. I'm telling you exactly what I want to do there. This, uh, these are the steps for the first two student inputs. So you have the option in this homework, um, you can do a simple basic human level walkthrough or an annotated human level walkthrough. I'm also, so you can start with this file and complete it. Uh, you, all you gotta do is start with the next uh, input uh, student and you're on your way, okay? So the basic idea is go ahead and use my work here. Um, for the program level walkthrough, I have given you uh, some starter notes on how the logic for each uh, student ID, GPA, hours completed, the term I've shown you to initialize the variables, okay? I went ahead and uh, identified, you'll notice that these variables at the top, these inputs and outputs, these are the exact same variables that are in my human level walkthrough. The only thing that's new here is I have shown working memory, which is what we, the computer kind of has to keep track in the background in order to complete the task. So I go step by step and you can use this file. You can use my logic here. Um, I've gone through the, the inputting the term and I've input the first two values. So given all that, the thing that you want to do is start by going through step by step, understanding the steps that I have done here, and understanding why these values are changing as they are. Once you've done that, you can take from my logic and you can change it as needed. So you're gonna input a student ID. The next student ID is 333. You're gonna output a student ID. And the next one will be 333. You're going to check uh, the student ID and see if it's equal to negative 1. We're not checking 222. we got to change it, in this case, to 333. Okay? 333 is not equal to negative 1, so we're going to continue. We're going to input a GPA, and I forgot what that is, uh, but I've got it right over here. For 333, it was 355, 3.55. And I'm going to output that GPA. Over here, I'm going to input uh, the hours completed, etc., etc. So I've given you example inputs, and I want you to go ahead. Uh, you can copy my logic, or you can go ahead and say what you want. If you want to just say, um, check if student ID is negative one, that's totally fine. You can also say, uh, input the GPA, output the GPA. You can say increment count by one. That's fine. Increment, increment total hours. That's fine. If those are the notes that you want to make, um, calculate average 
that's fine. But you'll see that my notes are actually formulas. And the formula that you'll put into uh, Python later on, that's actually, that's actually the exact code that you would want to put into Python uh, in this instance. So since you went ahead and said some, uh, got a little bit more sophisticated in your note, um, by doing so, you're working ahead on the next step. Uh, just to be clear on my logic, let's walk through that real quick. Uh, hopefully you understand initialized values or variables. Just means take my working memory and anything that should have a zero there, put a zero into it. I don't do that for high GPA student ID. Why? These are actual numbers. If I say to subtract or add one, that's meaningful. This is the high GPA student ID is not really a number at all. It's an identifier. It's like your social security number or a phone number. In theory, yeah, you can add a one to it, but it, that's not what it's intended to do. Okay, uh, it's an identifier, not a number. I'm going to input the term. I'm going to output the term. I'm going to input the student ID, output the student ID, and the next thing I want to do is check to see is is my student ID equal to negative one. Why am I doing this? Because that negative one is my flag or my kill value, my kill uh, flag, or you could think about it as the password. We're going to keep going until we get the uh, we're given the password. So this is Excel speak. That's the syntax for an if for those of you who might remember. And it says if the student ID is equal to negative one, if that value is true, stop and report out. If it's false, then continue. This equal open alligator sign reads as, uh, evaluates as, so that this statement here evaluates as, is uh, 111, uh, or 111 is not equal to negative one, and since it's not, I'm going to continue. I don't change anything, it just shows me my logic. So since I'm going to continue, I'm gonna in input the GPA, I'm gonna output the GPA, I'm gonna input the hours completed, output the hours completed, and now, this is where uh, the program level walkthrough is so different than a human level walkthrough. I want to keep track of a whole bunch of stuff on the backside that is how do I implement this program or this solution. So what this is saying is that my total student count is equal to the old to total student count, which I set to zero. And you can see it's zero plus one. So it's the old value of total student count plus one it's zero plus one, and I'm going to add the new value to total student count. This makes sense. When I started the program, I had processed no students. Now I have processed one student, and I want to make note of that. The total number of hours for all students, we started with zero, and now I've input 80 hours. So the total is zero plus 80, and I note that here. The average, is all the student hours divided by the count of all this, uh, the number of all the students. It's 80 divided by one, which is 80. Down here, I'm saying, if the GPA that was just entered is greater than the high GPA, which is noted up here, then first record that student's student ID, then record, record that student's GPA. The order does matter here. Okay, and that's the steps to process any given student. You'll notice that to process the second student, the steps are exactly the same. It's just that I have different numbers. I just input 222, two, two, so where I had 111 one, one before, I now have 222. Two, two. My total student count went from 0 plus 1 to 1 plus 1. My total for all students went from 0 plus 80 to 80 plus 100. 100 was the number that was just input. Yes, my latest GPA is higher than the uh, old GP, the uh, new high GPA, which was 2. And if you want to see that, you come over here. Here was the old high GPA right here. And here was that student ID. The new student that I input does have a higher GPA. So I'm going to, uh, down here, let me pull that up just a little bit, at 30, my high GPA, uh, the student ID of the student with the highest GPA is noted, 
as is that new high GPA. If it's not higher, I just skip it. This doesn't change. I don't input anything here. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, check this out. This will take you some time to figure out. This is actually quite a, uh, it's not super complicated, but this is a new skill. It's a new way of thinking. It's probably gonna take you a little while. Um, give it your best shot. And then if you're still stuck, give me an email or let's set up a meeting on Microsoft Teams. Have a great day. Take care.